Hello and welcome to another episode of the video is all about what I'm doing to the inside of this once empty metal van, now warm, lovely, beautiful, tiny home. Today we're going to be talking about the battery isolator, which is probably one of my favorite parts of the electrical system. Solar is pretty awesome, but the battery isolator gets me so excited because it makes me feel good about the time that I'm driving and using up gas because in, in exchange, I'm charging my house batteries. So what is a battery isolator? A battery isolator goes between your car battery and the batteries that you've installed in your van or RV or wherever you're trying to build a battery bank. The way that it works is normally your car, when it's running, is charging your car battery. And when it reaches its full charge, it's no longer charging the battery and it's not using whatever it could use to charge that battery. The battery isolator takes that extra charge when your car battery is full and then directs it towards where your house batteries are. So when my car batteries are full, which is, you know, after a little bit of driving, your car batteries are fine, unless you're using the accessories, etc., with the car off a lot. But most of the time, most car batteries are pretty topped off after a little bit of driving. So now that battery isolator will take all of that extra charge and it will direct it towards my house batteries. But it also will, and this is kind of exciting, it will take the charge in the reverse direction if need be. So my batteries for my van life system now will become auxiliary batteries for starting my car, which is amazing. So when I'm sitting in accessory mode, AC mode on your key, when you don't start the car, but you're full turned, you're using electronics and you're drawing power from the batteries, normally from your car batteries, but now with this battery isolator, I'm drawing it from my battery bank in the back, which some people might think, oh, well, that's, I don't want that because I don't want to drain my car, my house batteries, but I'd rather be able to start my car in any situation than not be able to start my car, but have power in the back just kind of makes sense. So when you're in AC, not, not started, the car's not started, but you're in AC, you're going to be giving power from your van life batteries to your car. And you can see this uh, depending on how much power you're using. Actually, it fluctuates based on the volume. Uh, if you're using the radio, turn the volume all the way up and you'll see more watts being used. Turn the volume all the way down and you'll see less watts being used. Then when you start your car, you'll see a massive jump as battery as the battery sends power the other way because my battery was already full, my car battery was already full. So when I start my car, it'll send all of that power towards my house batteries, my van life batteries, which then is immediately charging my van life batteries, which is pretty amazing. It actually is correlated with the um, RPMs of the of the car, I believe. So if you were to press the gas pedal while in neutral or park and raise the RPMs, you would get you would get more charge to your house batteries. Whether that's actually worth it, not really sure. Maybe it'll come in handy in some time down the road, but most of the time it's either just while you're driving or while you're sitting with the car running, it's sending flow towards your batteries, which is amazing. Okay, let's talk about the installation. Most people, when they're to the point of deciding whether to do shore power and battery isolator, might as well just do it at that point because you've done all of the difficult parts, you've set up the foundation for these types of things. And then the isolator and the shore power, as you saw in a different video, are just little steps further for a lot of reward. So for instance, the battery isolator is just one unit. It is one breaker and then one red cable. So you take your cover off of your seat. If you're in a transit, the car batteries are under the driver's seat. So you take two bolts off, remove that cover, slide the seat forward, remove the negative cable first because this makes the system not live anymore. Remove the negative cable first. That allows you to then touch the positive cable with no problem. Then you push the seat back. You go around to the positive terminal up at the front of the uh, driver's seat. Connect your cable. I'll put the links to everything I used down below to that positive terminal. Screw it back down, move the seat back forward. And then when you're ready, you reconnect the negative battery post. So I would finish connecting the whole system and then connect the negative battery post. When you do, there will be a spark. That's normal. You may even see your time reset on your Ford display system. I had to reset my time and everything. I don't know if there's any way to avoid that. Uh, I think it's just the system resetting when having been disconnected and then reconnected. Maybe there is, maybe I did it wrong. So then you take your positive cable and you run it. I ran mine straight through my plywood wall here and you connect it to the starter battery port or terminal on the battery isolator. There's only two terminals on the back of the battery isolator. There's starter, starter battery and secondary battery. Make sure that you connect the car battery to the starter battery port or terminal and the secondary battery to your actual secondary batteries. Otherwise, it reverses the charge and it will drain your car batteries in order to charge your van life batteries. I've seen people who do this. It's a very simple mistake to make, but then you're all of a sudden draining your batteries and you're stranded because your car batteries are trying to support your uh, van life batteries. Don't do that. Make sure you look 
car battery to starter battery, secondary battery to your van light batteries, and then there's a negative cable that comes with it, and then you just attach that to your negative post, your ground. Uh, if you have an electrical system like I do, I just connected it to a negative post on my fuse block, which is grounded by connecting to the negative bus bar, which is grounded to the van chassis. Very, very simple. You only need to buy a red wire. The black wire comes with it. Um, Depending on how far you're running from your car battery to your van light batteries, you might need to look into voltage drop and different gauges of wires. In my case, I'm so close that I didn't need to worry about that. And then once it's installed in your system, you can immediately start monitoring it using your battery monitor. You can see when you start your car, you can see a lot of energy start flowing to your batteries. And when you turn your car into AC, you're using your accessories, but you're not started your car, you can see the battery flow the other way. You can see your van life batteries start supporting the car, which is awesome. Overall, my intention in this van is probably to spend a good deal of time driving and a good deal of time in places that are either not sunny or I don't have consistent access to shore power or they're cloudy, snowy, rainy, whatever, Pacific Northwest skiing. So being able to charge my batteries while driving or even just turning the car on, exactly what I want. Very happy with this system. Hopefully this was helpful. The installation is pretty simple and totally worth the effort for the benefit you get over the long term.